got the real deal now. Gonna kick this sorry ass out on the street. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to week number 43 of the Lowdown Show, Brand Wars on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. We are your Canadian-based WWE podcast that reviews and discusses Monday Night Raw and Tuesday Night Smackdown Live from the past week. Also, during the show, we will have our new debuting segment, which is yet to debut. It's like I'm Alina. You know, it's worth the wait. We're still working some kinks out. We'll get it to you guys out soon. Not sure when. Hopefully by next week. Uh, we also have WWE headlines where we talk about any important news in WWE. We have some headlines for you today. Ladies and gentlemen, every week the Lowdown Show is broadcasted live on Spreaker at Spreaker.com slash NHBWP. And after we are done recording, it is posted for your listening enjoyment in full on Spreaker and YouTube. So go check us out wherever it's easier and convenient for you to listen to us. And if you'd like to join in the conversation, have your thoughts, questions, and opinions read on the podcast, tweet us and follow us at no Holds Bar WP on Twitter or by dropping a comment on YouTube and also subscribing to us on YouTube. We have lots of content on there for you, for you guys lately. Actually, lots of, uh, lots of added content. I'm going to add one as well with this podcast. Um, so go check us out and subscribe to us. I'm your host as always, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. I am not continuing to be joined by my co-host in the studio today because he is at corporate school and that's all right because school comes first and I appreciate that from corporate Cappy for choosing school over the podcast. Um, but yeah, uh, it sucks, man. He has to miss Tuesdays or he has to miss SmackDown on Tuesdays because of school. It gets in the way. I think it's from like six to 10 o'clock and that sucks. Um, but you know what? That's all right. Uh, we'll get the show done, and I'll do it alone. That's all right. So a couple of things before we start the show, guys. Uh, one is the name Brand Wars on Lowdown Show. You know, I'll leave it up to you guys. Should we continue with Lowdown Show Brand Wars? Like, do we really? Is that necessary? Because Raw just has been absolute dumpster fire. We we all know this. Like, do we? Is it even a brand war? SmackDown's one for us. Like our opinion, it's not like the actual ratings, but our opinion, SmackDown is one for like the last two months, three months, I don't know, four months. It's actually probably been good since the draft. So, do we actually need a brand wars? So I'll leave that up to you guys. If you want us, or you think we should drop the brand wars name, we'll drop it, and uh, maybe I'll redesign the Lowdown Show logo, or we'll keep the same. But uh, maybe I'll just drop the brand wars. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I've been uh, quite debating that lately. <laughs> um, I think that, yeah, the show started with just lowdown shows, so who knows? Maybe we'll go back, we'll revert back to that. Um, another thing I want to add, guys, if you haven't checked it out lately, I just added a new series on the podcast I'm doing by myself and hoping to have Cobra Cappy on some episodes for some commentary as well. But I started a WW2K17 universe mode. Uh, there's already two episodes in. First episode is where we did the entire roster. I showed you guys with the rosters and uh, I left it up to you guys to vote on who, which superstar tag team and women, or sorry, male superstar tag team and female superstar to choose from each brand to use for that universe mode. Um, the voting is done. Uh, I took all the winners out and I made it into video two. And on episode two, I also showed you the pay per views that will be used throughout the year, um, the champions, and uh, some overalls. I did fix the overall, so and that will be all fixed and shown to you guys in episode three. And then we'll get some simulating done up to the first branded pay-per-views backlash and extreme rules all right and that guys the lowdown show this week uh yeah uh this week's been incre- uh, incredible um due to the the recent news with uh seth rollins um and basically if he's actually injured and if he is and the injury is really bad the wrestle whole it, it could affect the entire wrestlemania card let's just say that because it's almost like a domino effect um because it looked like it's supposed to be Triple H and Seth Rollins. Then we had the addition of Samoa Joe this Monday. Um, we didn't know where the hell it was going. Kind of looks like it was going to be Rollins and Joe maybe at Fastlane. And then Triple H and Rollins at WrestleMania. But if that gets canceled, who the hell faces Triple H? Does he even have a WrestleMania match? What does Joe do at WrestleMania? You can't not include him in WrestleMania now that he's made his main roster debut. Or so we, so it seems. We don't know. It could be a, a henchman for Triple H for NXT, and it's the slow build up for Joe. We don't know if he's fully on the Raw roster yet, so we'll have to see and see what happens in the upcoming Raws. But yeah, it's crazy just because of that injury right there could create a domino effect and hopefully change some WrestleMania matches that <laughs> we out there don't want. And I'll get into that too in the show as well. Um, I think there's anything else I wanted to bring up. 
no, that's it. See, I need my co-host here because I do forget a lot. Um, so just get into your tweets out there. You know, we'll start off with the tweets and I have a special surprise for some of you that tweet certain words out. <laughs> I have a big surprise for you. Um, all right, get into your raw tweets now. Uh, let's start off with Jones143 at Mike Jones. Jones. I don't know if I'm reading that right. A lot of, a lot of O or one big O and a bunch of S's here. Yeah, Adam holds Bar WP. Great show. Simply put, by uh, Jones one four three. Thank you for your tweet. Next set of tweets comes from Jordan Spear. He puts Raw gets a six point seven five out of ten for the Joe debut, and Sami Zayn versus Jericho. Actually, actual story progression in the Rollins versus Authority storyline. Well, as far as we know, we don't know what the what the whole uh, Seth Rollins injury. We'll see what happens. But that tweet came beforehand, so thank you, Jordan, for that tweet. He also puts honestly. Though SmackDown beating Raw cons- consistently is not surprising due to shit booking. And I would definitely agree with you there, Jordan Spear. Um, a lot of shit booking. That's typical Monday Night Raw. Uh, when you have a show run by Vince McMahon and everything goes through him and, you know, he's the final word, look what happens. And we don't know if that's the same case with SmackDown, but clearly it's almost not the same case because SmackDown is completely opposite of what Monday Night Raw is. Um, Next set of tweets, Glorious Greg. Raw was great at the end, the debut of Samoa Joe and Triple and Triple H and Seth Rollins all together adds up to five. And the Zayn and Jericho match was pretty good, so I'll give it a six. All right, Glorious Greg, thank you for your tweets. And you a six is a fair rating, I think, for this week. Uh, Tony Mercer puts better than the previous weeks. Joe debuting was fantastic, and Sammy got a much needed win. I'd rate this Raw six out of ten. Thank you, Tony, for your tweets. Next set of tweets, Casey Salvis, not bad raw. Zane versus Jericho was really good. Reigns booed out of the building again. <laughs> of course, Sammy jo- Samoa Joe debut was really good, but he should be on SmackDown. I definitely agree with you there. I think he uh, should have been on SmackDown. We'll get into that, into the review. Um, he'll get buried on Raw because it's six out of, because it's Raw. Six out of ten, Reigns still sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you there. SmackDown is still the A show by a lot. And I still agree with you there by a lot. Next set of tweets comes from Irrelevance. He puts, I missed out on Raw. I only watched, only watched or rewatched the segments with Seth and Stephanie and Triple H. I bet the rest was forgettable. <laughs> You're not far off there. Um, he puts, I knew Seth would get ambushed. It took him too long to get to the ring, and the promo by Triple H was amazing. Uh, the promo Seth had st- with Stephanie was excellent. The whole nothing to lose and the kid's statement really sold me. Yep, I'll get into that in the review and how uh, intense that was. And at least we saw the right Samoan today. Yes, we got the one, the right, the the right Joe Samoan or the Samoan Joe we wanted. <laughs> oh God! Oh, here we go. So y'all, in his last set of tweets, I get to use the new soundboard. Uh, I saw my boy got a title match, but the big dog interfered. Fuck Roman Reigns. And I agree with you there. Fuck Roman Reigns. Uh, yeah. All right. So, that being said, let's get into your SmackDown tweets out there, ladies and gentlemen. And we'll start off with Glorious Greg. He puts SmackDown is clearly putting a lot of faith in Corbin, and I like it. Hashtag Corbin Revolution. Can't wait to see more of Samoa Joe on Raw. And do you guys think Corbin will be IC champ after Mania? Uh, I see. I don't think so. I think Corbin's more slated for the main event world title picture. And I'm hoping that actually comes to fruition. Um, Baron Corbin definitely looks like he could be a top heel for that world title. And I hope that happens in the near future. And I'm hoping and praying to God that we get it maybe by SummerSlam. That's only my opinion. We'll have to see what Corbin Cappy says next week. If he can get on the show, we'll see uh, with him. Uh, next set of tweets. Okay, now you put. Uh, oh, I got your your tweets here. Confused, glorious Greg. SmackDown was solid considering they have two weeks to build storylines. Yeah, that's <laughs> get into that in the review, and they did pretty good. The show ending with Corbin was great. Yeah, thank you for your tweets, as always, glorious Greg. Casey Salas put SmackDown was okay. The build up for the Elimination Chamber was really good. And the tag team segment was ridiculous. Made no sense. Six out of ten. At least SmackDown doesn't have Roman Reigns. Thank Christ it doesn't. Oh man. Uh, 
Oh, I forgot the tweets, the raw tweets by uh, Tyler Jones, and I'll include them because he includes the SmackDown ones as well. So I'll start off with Tyler Jones. He puts one, Sami Zayn, Jericho was solid, Shea <laughs> Zaro and Bay. <laughs> God, we're actually pretty good. Cruisers are relevant again. Hashtag. And KO looked good. <laughs> uh, two, love that Braun hates Reigns too. Feel bad for Sasha because feud is just awful for her. And fucking Joe. Oh, and Triple H. <laughs> Yep, definitely agree with you there, Tyler. Uh, why it's against Harper and Cena was actually pretty entertaining. Els Mella still sucks. Oh, God. Everything about that is just cringe. I agree with you. Um, Ziggler and Kalisto is pretty good, too. Uh, women's tag was pretty good. Happy Naomi getting a run for the title. Yeah, she's been impressing me lately as well, too, Tyler. Uh, tag open challenge sucked. I'll get into that in my review. Ambrose and Styles was great. I give Raw a 6.25 and SmackDown a 7.88. What a rating by Tyler Jones. And then he puts hashtag. Uh, God, he has another tweet and I have to do it again. Hashtag. With a shit title shot, I was still happy texting uh, Kyle which is me after they announced it and we knew it was coming <laughs> yeah we saw it in no man gains <laughs> getting into that all right smackdown tweets from irrelevance he put smackdown after pay-per-views aren't always great x here Sh- show wasn't great the only highlights were aj versus dean they're always great a lot of greats in there with only two weeks to build, I don't expect the next two episodes to be great they should with such little time they have and I mean, I agree with you there. Like, you can't build up to a pay per view with two weeks. It's just useless. Plus, Corbin coming out on top at the end and Miz roasting that shit as Otunga was amazing. I agree with you there, irrelevance. So, with that, SmackDown gets a 5 out of 10. Oh, and one more thing. <laughs> Fuck Roman Reigns. That's all. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Irrelevance. <laughs> so let's get into your tweets. And yeah, we are missing Michael Chow there. I think it's just because I'm recording this on a Tuesday night. I think I forgot to mention that, guys. This episode is not live. And I do apologize for that because I don't think I'll have time uh, Thursday to do it. I have work in Corporate Capia School. So our sc- our schedules are clashing. So I have to record this here on Tuesday night. Um I do apologize for not having it live. I know we always like to do it live, but this show will be definitely recorded uh, Tuesday night and then or Wednesday night. Sorry. And I'll post this uh, on Thursday at some point before I go to work. Um, Yeah. Other than that, those are your tweets, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Don't know what else to say. Uh, Raw and SmackDown this week are just, uh, I don't even know. I don't know if I want to do a review for raw. Um, Cause I literally am speechless. Like I honestly don't know what to say. <laughs> like, I, why do I even bother doing a review for it? I don't know. But you know what? That's what we promised you guys is get review for Raw and SmackDown. So oh, I'm gonna have to do the Raw review. I don't even know why I bother even doing this review. Seriously, I don't. Like Raw was okay this week, but it really had you had to had to watch through all the filler crap in the middle to find and to get to anything interesting. Seriously. So Raw was like a meh for me this week. It wasn't good. It wasn't bad. It was a meh. Obviously due to us getting the right Samoan at the end of the show, as opposed to, or as opposed to the one we got at the Royal Rumble, which we'll get into. But Raw was live this week from Laredo, Texas. Oh, fantastic. Literally. It would have been better taped. I think the crowd was crickets. That was freaking either casual central or just exhausted and just tired of what they seen the night before at the Royal Rumble. Cause literally there was, they're like the, what the something energy center. There was no energy in the crowd. It was, it was gone. Roman Reigns sucked the energy right out of that crowd the night before. I wouldn't have been hyped for raw either. I don't blame them. But at least, you know, get hype at certain things that they didn't, and it really pissed me off, and it really took away from Raw. I mean, you can tune in to the beginning of Raw, accidentally fall asleep, 
or you know go to the grocery store or if you know you've got to do the errands your errands and you don't want to be in the doghouse with your parents and or girlfriend and you know you had to do them right now at that point in raw you can come back for the end of raw and you would have missed anything you wouldn't miss anything of importance or anything you had to rewind to go watch because it was just useless filler bullshit it was literally bad so we'll talk about the beginning of raw and we opened up with kevin owens and jericho owens was very very high for this segment um i like the the attitude he brought out here it was very very passionate it felt almost like he was, he wanted it to be very intense like he's put you could tell on his face he was putting the effort into making it intense and i love that about kevin owens when he has promos like this and he's not the the guy uh trying to run away from you know title shots and stuff which he kind of did today so whatever um Jericho also bragged about being the 61 minute man. Yeah, uh, what sleeping at ringside? Because like Jericho, you can brag about being a 61 minute man. I and I'm not making fun of Jericho, guys. I'm not trying to rip on him. I'm just saying he's he's bragging about being 61 minute man when basically 90 percent of the time he was in the Royal Rumble, he was sleeping on the outside. And I know that was part of his character, but y- you can't just brag about that. You did nothing. Like Jericho is basically useless in the Royal Rumble match, in my opinion. Just saying. It was just, it was lame. It was very lame that he was bragging about it. That's it. Um, then we get freaking, you know, Braun Strowman. I had, to, I had to play it for you guys. He comes out after Owens, uh, or after Owens says that he couldn't, he couldn't defend the title if it wasn't without Chris Jericho only. And, you know, that pisses Strowman off. Strowman comes out and says that he was promised a title shot from Owens tonight. And we, he, he shows the footage from like almost a month ago. And I'm actually really, really impressed that WWE actually went to that. I'm actually really surprised. Um, I didn't think WWE would actually go through with it, but they did. Then Mick Foley comes out here and guy looking like he's ready for St. Patrick's Day. Guy looks like he's just, he he walked out of his house and he's ready to go bar hopping for St. Patrick's Day because I don't know what the fuck he was wearing here, guys. But I was just going, what the hell? What is he wearing? Like, did he get dressed in the dark or did did he go like through his Christmas collection and find the best suit he can find? Cause I don't know what the fuck that was. Guy looked like he went through Don Sherry's wardrobe and found the ugliest thing to wear and then threw it on. Said, yeah, I look good. I, I look like a raw GM, whatever. Anyways, fully agrees with Strowman and Owens basically says that it's not really fair. He's been battered and bruised. He went through a hellacious match with uh, uh, Roman Reigns last night. To kind of agree with Owens, I mean, the guy went through like hell. Look at his freaking, he's taped up. He's got clear bruises everywhere. And then you're going to put him in a title match against Braun Strowman? Ah, what a way to make your champion look strong. Why not? Let's throw him in a match with Braun Strowman. Way to go, Ra. Some more great booking. Then Foley says it will happen uh, later that night after Owens tries to plead to not make it happen. So, <laughs> let's just move on from there. I just, I hate how they make Owens look. Like, literally, he's limping, he, he's taped up, he's bruised, but then you got a guy like Roman Reigns, no man fucking gains over here, who didn't have one scratch on him, like, not what they could have, like, make up some scratches on the guy, or taped something up, no, he came out later this night, and he was perfectly okay, no limp, no nothing, I'm sick and tired of making, the making Roman Reigns look so goddamn strong. It's literally sickening. Like, how do you expect us to believe in storytelling when you have two guys that went through the same amount of crap in one match and only Owens to come out of it? Your champion that is, like, basically on the verge of being hospital-ridden. Terrible. Terrible booking. Terrible storyline. That's why SmackDown continues to be the A-show because of shit like that. Anyways, this eventually leads into a Sami Zayn versus Chris Jericho opening match. And Zayn is promised a future U.S. title shot if he gets to beat the champion Chris Jericho here. Now, why does this happen? Why not have Sami Zayn? What what happened to the days where when people had to battle through the mid-card to get a shot at the mid-card title? Why is it now that if you beat the mid-card champion once, you're instantly given a title shot? That is complete bogus. I don't agree with it. I don't know if you guys do or not. I just don't. It, it seems silly to me. Anyways, it was actually a very good match. Um, 
I did find a bad idea for Y2J to lose here. Um, you're basically making him look weak again. Like you have this team of your mid card and and world champion, and you make him look weak. What is what? I don't understand. You you look back in the days where like I don't know the ruthless aggression era when Triple H was world champion. Did he ever lose like that all the time? No, no. He has never made to look weak. He had evolution behind him. When he was on his own, he could kick people's ass at a drop of a dime. He, he was just he was brutal. That was when I loved world champions. World champions made sense then. World champions make no sense now. Anyways, we'll move on to cruiserweights. Yes, cruiserweights. Mustafa Ali versus Tony. So before I get into this, guys, I've heard a rumor that Vince is very, very, very unhappy with how the cruiserweights are getting over on Monday Night Raw. Vince said that if this continues to happen on Raw, they're only going to have only one match every Monday, as opposed to their two or three, whatever you can you want to tally it as. I basically tally it as one every Monday because if you calculate the total minutes of their actually out, of how they're actually out there, it would you know calculate to one match time, I guess, in one segment than what they should be getting, and as in three to four matches a night on a goddamn three hour show. Just saying. But seriously, Vince, are you freaking blind here? How do they not know what to do with these guys? How? It's really freaking simple. And I say it every week. Vince gives no shits about these cruiserweights. Why don't you put them on their own goddamn show live every Wednesday before NXT Two hours at least, or even one hour. Make it a full hour, an hour and a half. You'll and and I lo- not even only that. The cruiserweights are seriously being held back here. I, I I don't know if it's just you guys that see it, but what happened to all the moves and the spots and the unreal matches that we've seen in the cruiserweight classic? How come from that we go to this shit where literally it looks like they're being? Held- where are the high moves, the high flyers? What happened to this? The cruiserweight cr- division is dumbed down. To what Vince wants to see. Because he, he doesn't like... He, honestly, guys, he doesn't give a shit about the cruiserweights. I just I don't understand. He is solely to blame for what's happening to the cruiserweight division right now. And thank God he does not touch 205 Live. Or else we'd be in big trouble. And that division would be in big trouble. Vince just needs to simply listen to Triple H. He knows what's going on. He knows what to do. There's so much potential with the cruiserweights that Vince is holding them back on. And it's literally pissing me off every single week. Like they wonder why the second hour, like the middle hour of Raw, is the lowest rating in a three-hour show. Because you can put the cruiserweights in there and they do absolutely fuck all. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Oh yeah, And about the match, it was useless anyways. It was like two minutes long. I really didn't give a shit. I skipped it. Can't give any other uh, review on that. So I'll move on. When it's Stephanie McMahon and Seth Rollins face to face in ring uh, segment, um, Seth Rollins is out there talking about what he did at Takeover and what Triple H did to him in response to that. Stephanie comes out. She says that Triple H is not here. Um, Rollins says that well he should be and you should let him off his leash. Um, <laughs> uh, I really liked where this was going. At this point, I'm like, oh my god, okay, something's intense. Something's gonna happen here. The intensity is building up. And I was right. Rollins basically calls Triple H a gut, basically gutless, and he had to use his security goons uh, to do his dirty work for him at Takeover. And that Triple H is a scared man. Rollins then threatens to show up at WWE headquarters if he doesn't, you know, face Rollins or tell Steph. What if he shows up at their house and have one of their kids answer the door? So at this point, I'm like, oh my god. Very, very personal here. Um, I'm actually surprised everybody really went there, but it's good intensity and good fuel for this feud if it, they actually go through with it, and we don't know now because of the whole Rollins injury. We'll have to see what happens. Um, but this right here definitely builds a fuel, and I'm all for it if they you know go along with it, and we'll see what happens to Rollins. Um, Stephanie said then she, she lied, and Triple H is actually coming, and she's coming, or he's coming for Seth Rollins. 
So great, great segment here. Um, definitely one of the only key parts of Monday Night Raw in that three hour gap. So let's get into the filler crap and we'll start off with oh my god, Bailey, Cesaro, and Sheamus versus Charlotte in the club. Please tell me you guys don't like this, man. I did not like this whatsoever. So WWE took, takes two feuds and matches at the Rumble and adds them together in a tag team match for Monday Night Raw. That is typical Raw right there. And it's I really just don't give a shit. I do not give a shit. As much as my girl's in there and I love the club and I love Cesaro and Sheamus, I just don't give – I didn't give a flying shit about this. No, just didn't care. The club winning – just felt way too late when the titles on Sunday. Just it was too late. They should have won it months ago. So this match was a meh. Um, the whole tag team division on Raw is a complete cluster. We don't even know who's like the number one contender right now. It could be the Club or it could be Cesaro and Sheamus. I know they're entitled to their rematch, but besides them, who else is in the division that's come? You know, competition for them. Nobody. Um. Also, I think they're booking Charlotte terribly here. Uh, to make her lose on Raws and win at pay-per-views, I don't know what the hell the booking behind that is, but I don't know. I really don't like it whatsoever. It's really ruining the character of Charlotte, in my opinion. Um, just, I don't know. I don't know what the hell this booking is. Just, uh, I don't even know what else to say about it. Anyways, it was an all right match if I gave it anything. Cesaro, Sheamus, and Bailey won. Nothing else much to say about that. Uh, let's move on. We got uh, another Cruiserweight segment. Uh, the Neville, was it the coronation or crowning or whatever that stupid nonsense was uh, with Rich Swan. Just the segment felt very Vince touched, if I can put it that way. Felt very, very botchy. Um, I love these guys though, and I love and I have so much love for the cruiserweight division. Neville is going to be huge for that division in the heel way. Definitely going to be the top heel in the cruiserweight division. Um, Swan is unreal too. 205 just needs to be at least two hours and get their own spot on Wednesday nights, man. It just it needs to happen. It's it, I'm getting sick and tired of seeing or hoping for something to happen on Raw and just getting let down every single Monday. And shit they do on Raw that don't make sense for 205 Live. Um, I mean, just look at 205 Live. There's so, so much potential behind it. We had Tozawa debuting this week and we got metal leak debuting soon it's just oh my god i i I want this show to be successful and a lot of fans want to be successful but they're gonna get killed and just just, i don't know what i don't know the words i'm looking for they're gonna be yeah just killed it's gonna be done cruiser division will be drawn out and no one's gonna care anymore so we'll move on uh backstage segment with uh sasha banks she's getting taped up before her match with nia Jax. Uh, Sasha, Sasha Banks here looked very, very flustered and angry. Um, and can you blame her? Look at how they're booking her, <laughs> right? Uh, Bailey tries to get her to break out, or to, sorry, not to break out to uh, uh, back out. Sorry, break out. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll break away from this Nia Jax view. I don't blame her for that either. <laughs> uh, but that fails. Sasha replies to her in a very like heelish tone. So like a get the hell out of my face tone. So I'm hoping this is a, a seed planted for the heel turn of Sasha Banks. Uh, Sasha is definitely, you know, uh, what I, the word I'm looking for is uh, slipping into boringness. Like I, I really couldn't care less about a face Sasha man I just it needs to stop she needs to go back to to being heel she's a huge draw as a heel and she would definitely I don't I think people say she would benefit from being on Smackdown but she could be a top person in a draw on Raw as a heel because right now she's just ice cold she's done uh, we move on. We had Braun Strowman versus Kevin Owens for the Universal title happens on this point in the show I thought it was going to be the main event um Owens basically forced Y2J to come out here uh, for protection. I guess this is uh, another seed planted for the split to happen, and and it's only a matter of time before it happens. Uh, Jericho got just absolutely shit-kicked, though, as Braun Strowman came out, gets booted right out of the chair, and then chokeslammed through the table. So Jericho gets owned before his match even starts. Um, But another meh type of match which was interrupted by No Man Gains. So Roman Reigns comes out and interrupts the match, starts kicking the shit out of Braun Strowman. 
uh, goes back in the ring and spears Roman Reigns, and we're right back to status quo where Roman Reigns is made to look stronger than the Universal Champion. That is fantastic. Anyways, I'm moving on. I don't want to talk about that anymore. We got some news here, um, though. Speaking of No Man Games and Strowman, the plans are to have Roman Reigns feud with Braun Strowman, and that would eventually lead to Reigns in a taker match at WrestleMania. Also, Owens is slated to face Goldberg at Fastlane for the Universal title and then have, lose it and drop the title to Goldberg and have him face Lesnar at WrestleMania. So those are the current plans. I don't know what the fuck, why, because I don't think anyone wants to see any of those matches. Goldberg and Lesnar, whatever, we knew that was going to happen. But for the Universal title, I think that's just overkill. Um... So I'm so glad we didn't, me and Corporate Cappy were looking to buy tickets for WrestleMania this year. I know but last year we planned it, and thank God we're not going. I don't want to see that if this is the case. Um, Lesnar, how I would book it would be, at, at this point, with the current storylines, and if they had to change it, you know what? Book Lesnar versus Goldberg, you're going to have to do that. Balor versus Undertaker. Reigns versus Strowman for the Universal title. What a way to make Ron, Braun Strowman look strong. And have him beat Roman Reigns for the Universal Championship. Have Reigns win it back. Um, and then have Owens face Jericho for the U.S. title. That's inevitable. So that's how I would book it with the current storylines right now. Uh, we all know about my fantasy booking and what it would actually be. Um, but we're just getting the worst case scenario now. Like, are they are they high backstage? Do they not care about what they're putting out for this WrestleMania? And I know now it's just Vince McMahon because apparently he's told everybody to you know shut the hell up. It's my WrestleMania, and I'm booking it the way I want to book it. So way to go, Vince. Way to ruin another WrestleMania. Um, we'll move on, and we get Lesnar and Heyman showing up on Raw. And I totally, totally forgot. I was surprised, but I totally forgot he's actually booked for every Raw except one until WrestleMania this year. So get Paul Heyman in the ring, and, man, this guy is just the god of all promos. Um this one was another intense and classic promo by Paul Heyman. He issues a challenge to uh, to, Gold, to Bill Goldberg to end the story at WrestleMania, and basically, you know, there was a a lot of uh, I guess implying of uh, so like basically, so what if Goldberg has beaten Lesnar the way he has? But he just wants this. You know what? I can't care about this match. I can't believe they actually did it a second time at the Royal Rumble. They made Brock Lesnar lose that way. I, just, I don't know. I, I don't know why they would do that. And honestly, I, I, it, it's almost like I don't want to care. I don't care. Um, so, if that really goes with Meek Mahan's plan <laughs> and putting the Universal title on Goldberg at Fastlane, and Lesnar and Goldberg will happen and will appear... Uh, 95% of all the Raws until Mania, I could slightly be okay with that as long as they do it right, which, I mean, I don't know what the hell Vince is thinking, but, you know, it's one of those things where we just see. We'll, we'll just have to see. Um, we'll have to actually see uh, uh, wait for the injury on Seth Rollins and see where that takes us for the WrestleMania card. Moving on, Raw, we had a Tornado Tag match, and I really cannot review and will not review this because it was literally... Just pointless. I just don't, didn't care about this. I think I skipped it. I was on my phone. Well, actually, mostly here on Twitter. Um, but Enzo and Cast won. Sorry for, for those out there who want a review on this. I'm just not doing it, and I just cannot. So I'm going to move on. We got Triple H and Rollins to end off the show. Triple H comes out and cuts a promo, and Seth Rollins says he's trying not to be the guy he used to be anymore. Basically wants to be the creator and be the one to make everyone happy and basically drive the future of NXT into what everyone wants and to be basically the guy that creates the next Seth freaking Rollins. Um, so Rollins comes out here. Uh, he's getting ready to fight. He's walking slowly down the ramp. Triple H has his blazer off. He's getting ready to brawl. And then all, all of a sudden, Samoa Joe jumps Seth Rollins. I'm What? I was I was going nuts for this, and I could not believe the crowd here. Freaking crickets! There was no pop whatsoever, nothing. Oh, it really took so much out of it. It, it might not to you guys out there, but this actually took a lot of it. The crowd were freaking crickets for this. Um, 
Joe beats the crap out of Rollins, and I guess there was the one spot where he's locking in the Kojia clutch, and Rollins' leg got caught in between uh, Samoa Joe's legs and injured himself. I guess that's where injured. Um, if you guys go back and listen, you can actually hear Rollins say, ow, and Joe asking if he's okay. Um, it might be storyline. It might not. We'll have to see what happens for that. Um, it, it's going to be interesting. I, I, again, like guys, if, if Rollins is injured, it's going to create a domino effect. And we're going to have to see what the WrestleMania card is going to be like. So, saying that, Raw this week, guys, I gave it just the... F- I give it a 4.5 out of 10. Like, nothing really excited me except for the Triple H and Rollins thing and the Kevin Owens thing. That's pretty much it, man. Nothing else excited me for Raw. It was just useless. Felt useless. The, the whole filler in the middle of the show. And that's basically it. Um, so... That's it for Ryan. I'm giving it a 4.5 out of 10. All right, guys. On to the SmackDown review. And SmackDown was live from Corpus Christi. I don't know if I'm saying that even right. But what the hell, man? Like freaking crickets. My lord. Once again, two cities in a row this week. We get fucking crickets. Why does WWE choose to go to these... Small, dinky-ass towns that have, like, a 10,000-seat arena for SmackDown. This doesn't make sense, man. It makes... It ruins, and it takes so much out of the show. I don't know. Why? I know you gotta spread the wealth, and, you know, you gotta go to these small towns and give them a piece of WWE, but come on, man. It's killing us fans watching at home. Anyway, SmackDown this week was... Uh, it was good, but it was meh. At the same time, a lot to talk about, which we'll get into in the review. It was definitely better than Raw, but not by much. Um, just in my opinion alone, uh, only get two weeks to build for the elimination chamber, which is complete bullshit. I know you guys feel the same way out there. Like you can't build for a pay-per-view with two freaking weeks. You can't, they already have all the elimination chamber entrance announced. We had no battling for a spot, none whatsoever. Whatever happened to that? You just get to automatically be in Elimination Chamber for the world title? How, how do you go about choosing? Obviously, John Cena and Styles are going to be in there, but how do you go about choosing the rest? It doesn't make any sense. You had guys like Apollo Crews compete for a spot, or, or Corbin compete for a spot. I know he's in it, but at least him compete for it. And the Miz, what the hell is the Miz and Ambrose in here? Why aren't they having an icy title match? The fuck is this? Anyways, uh,. I guess you can look at the Rumble and see that SmackDown had four weeks to build for that, or even more. But no, we got two weeks to build for Elimination Chamber. Um, I think just think Elimination Chamber should be like at least by the end of February. Put Fastlane at like mid March or uh, early March if you have to. Like, it doesn't matter. You, you don't have to have them so far apart, WWE. I just don't understand. Anyways, the Elimination Chamber entrants were announced tonight. We got Styles, Cena, Ambrose, Bray Wyatt, Miz, and Corbin. I don't understand. Well, you don't need the IC champion in here. It doesn't make sense to me. I just, all those styles did tell Shane McMahon that he does not want to be to have this match as the official rematch for the WWE title. So uh, I can already see where this is going from here. Shane versus Styles at WrestleMania. Fan freaking tastic. It's the match we all want. No. Why? Why are gonna? Uh, why? Why do we get Styles for Shane McMahon? That is the worst match of all time. I'm telling you right now, two different styles clashing with each other is just not gonna work. Shane McMahon is the most generic wrestler I've ever seen. Guys even have a freaking finishing move. And, and tell me what Shane McMahon's finishing move, other than his stupid coast to coast elbow drop, it's not a finishing move. Tell me what his finishing move is. I don't know. I just felt like they needed a qualifying match for this, so whatever. We'll get into it. Opening segment, John Cena, the champ is here. Of course, we got to open with John Cena. Um, but good for John Cena, man, with what he's done. 16 championships now, tying Ric Flair's record, man. Good good for him. Such a, it's just an unreal career. And I know you hear me and Cappy dissing all the time, but we, we still have much respect for the guy. The dude didn't even start in the indies was pure dota b from the start and his whole life is around dota b so good for the guy um see that comes out says he isn't here to celebrate elimination chamber is in two weeks and he's a fighting champion so he basically says if you want some smackdown roster come get some and he's interrupted instantly by bray white and randy orton bray saying that in two weeks Cena will basically be trapped like a little rat 
the Elimination Chamber. <laughs> and it will be uh, leaving the chamber as the new champion. And the world will enter the era of Wyatt. I would love to see that era. Bray Wyatt with the championship is definitely a dream come true for all us fans out there. I know you guys listening to would love to see Bray Wyatt with the World Heavyweight Championship. Uh, he starts saying things are changing around here. And you can just you ask my brother Randy Orton over here who is the winner of the Royal Rumble match. Orton says if Cena somehow escapes the chamber, he will be waiting for him at WrestleMania. And I pray to God that doesn't happen. Do not want to see Cena versus Orton for the 800,000th time in the last 10 years. Um, so yeah, if Cena somehow escapes the chamber, Orton says the Wyatts will be well, uh, set free the WWE championship, whatever that means. Ooh, set the championship free. I don't know. Uh, Brain Orton walked towards the ring after saying this. The lights come on. They start to surround the ring, looking like they're going to attack Cena. The lights go out. Lights come back on. Harper is standing next to Cena, looking like he's about to attack John Cena, and then turns towards Ray, Randy Orton and Bray Wyatt. Whoa. So him alongside John Cena for this. Um, then Shane books the obvious tag match, pulling a Teddy Long. Holla, holla, holla. Um, you know what? At least we got Cena out of all this. I think we at least got Cena doing something right here. If you guys miss it, go look back and look. He put over AJ Styles. He, he, he completely put him over. I can respect Cena for saying that. So that's one good thing we can take out of this. Now the good thing is, you know, there's a the potential of Bray Wyatt to be the world champion uh, for the first time in his career. And we're all looking forward to that. And we really hope it actually happens. Um, in my opinion, I hope uh, I would say that WWE should make him win it at WrestleMania. But I don't know how you go about booking that. I just feel like Bray Wyatt winning the WWE Championship at a uh, SmackDown branded pay-per-view just doesn't feel like it should be his first time. Um, I don't know why. There's I've seen a lot of people on Twitter um, after the John Cena and Styles match at uh, Royal Rumble and saying they're comparing it to Okada and Omega. You guys need to stop. All right. That match is definitely probably going to be match of the year. I'm telling you right now, nothing's going to compare to that unless WWE pulls something out of their ass and gives us something to beat that, which I probably think there's going to be something compared to that, at least by the end of this year. So we'll see. Um, I really hope they don't go through a scene of Orton. We don't want to see that. No one wants to goddamn see that. Um, I really don't think it's, uh, you know, the SmackDown writer's fault because it, the word is that Vince is listening to nobody on how he's writing WrestleMania this year. And we all know that. So it's not the SmackDown writer's fault. If it ends up being Cena and Orton or WrestleMania, this is solely Vince's fault. And I wouldn't put it past him to do that. You know, if we get Cena and Orton, whatever, he gets kind of shrug it off. I'm just thankful I didn't buy WrestleMania tickets for this year. Um, what they should do, though, is, in my opinion, I think would be a really, really good match, an interesting match, is you have Styles walk out of the Elimination Chamber with the WWE Championship, and you have Bray Wyatt versus Styles versus Orton and versus Cena. At this point in the storyline, it would only make sense to have a fatal four-way for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship at WrestleMania, and that's where you have Bray Wyatt come out on top. That would be huge. You know the crowd will get behind it. Um, I mean, I don't really like the idea of a fatal four-way. I think it's just a big clusterfuck, but at this point, you're going to have to add all four together, and I think that'd be really cool. You can show some deception in there with Randy Orton and Bray Wyatt. You can have Luke Harper make some appearances in there. I think it'd just be a really, really good match, and you have Bray Wyatt come out on top. Um, there's also the talk about Orton facing Bray Wyatt one-on-one -on -one at WrestleMania for the title. I think it could be somewhat intriguing. I think the storyline is going to be really good going for that, so we'll see what happens in terms of the world title picture on SmackDown. Um, so we get into the match, Cena in a Harper versus Bray, uh, Bray Wyatt and Randy Orton. It was a decent match. Um, there, we got some more deception with Harper and the, uh, Bray and Randy Orton here. Orton ends up winning with an RKO out of nowhere. And that's that. So move on to something. One of the parts where I made SmackDown meh this week, the reaction of a meh was Ellsworth and Carmella here. This was seriously fucking cringe. I don't know who out there. Thought this was a good segment. I started reading people's Twitter responses to this and saying that they actually enjoyed it and thought it was funny. There is absolutely nothing funny about this entire thing. I literally would have loved to rewatch 
Gary the Milkman Millman in that horrendous minute and 20 second segment on like the first episode of SmackDown than this shit. So you got Ellsworth coming out looking like a poor man's limp biscuit. <laughs> like what the fuck? What the hell is he? What the hell is that? The turtle with the chin looking, I don't know. Uh, acting all heel like too. Whatever. I guess he's heel now. Sick. I don't really, I really don't care. Um, he's telling the crowd to shh, like, cool, that's great, Ellsworth, you're healed, just get the hell off TV, man, you don't need to be on TV, you're wasting fucking time on SmackDown. He comes out, um, or he comes out to introduce Carmella, Carmella comes out to face this, this, I I don't even know what the hell this thing was, literally looked like, uh, Harley Quinn in Asuka's Love Child, I don't know what the hell I was looking at, her name was Delia Dawson. That's that's neat, man. That's great. Uh, enough of these jobbers already, man. You know it's bad when the crowd is chanting, let's go jobber. Against Carmella, who's supposed to be one of the, you know, not, I guess, top women in the division. But one at least, you know, the ones you're supposed to be talking about. She had that great feud with Nikki Bella. They suddenly dropped all of a sudden. It had re- it replaced with Natalia. I don't know what the hell happened there. But you get her now doing this shit? Are you kidding me? The N- N- Carmella squashes. That's it. It was useless. Goddamn useless segment. And okay, Ellsworth. You know the tr- the Ellsworth train is long gone. He needs to get off TV. He had his whole thing with WWE. Got the crowd behind him. He got his T-shirt and night. Now get the hell off TV. He's just useless. It is taking up time. That's it. So we're moving on. Dolph Ziggler versus Kalisto. Um, this is, this is, okay, Dolph Ziggler is a heel here, I think, because the crowd was cheering him in his entrance. I don't think the heel transition is uh, quite uh, turned yet with the casual crowd, as in Corpus Christi. Or Chris, I don't know how I'm saying it. I'm going to probably botch it all the time in this episode, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry. Um, but he's supposed to be a heel here. I guess cheered, whatever. I, it's, I guess it's really tough. Uh, for Darby to try to get him as a heel when you're in uh, horrendous crowds like this. So, whatever. Um, match was okay. Uh, a lot of uh, Ziggler domination, uh, getting a little cocky. Ends up super Kalisto for the win. Starts attacking him after the bell, and Apollo Crews comes out for the save once again. The same rinse and repeat crap we've seen for the last two weeks. And chases Ziggler into the crowd, and that's it. Ziggler basically didn't do anything heelish till after the match. Great when he tried to rip off Kaliso's mask. That's great. That's a good way to make him a heel, I guess. Um, Apollo Crews with Dolph Ziggler, though, at Elimination Chamber looks intriguing as hell. If they have a match at Elimination Chamber, I guarantee you guys it'll be a dark horse match. Something that's just going to slip right by you. It's actually going to be really good. I hope they give him the time to have that type of good match at Elimination Chamber. So move on. We got Naomi and Becky Lynch's uh, backstage segment here. And I just want to say, Naomi has been looking good to me ever since her return, man. She's growing on me. Um, just like her in-ring ability. I know she's always been that good, but literally, she's just it, there's something about her. There's like a spark in her that's uh, actually got me to like uh, be impressed by what she's doing right now. And it, and it looks like she can be a dominant diva in the division. So, you know what? It looks like she has more drive in her, and I appreciate that. And I can definitely get behind that. So, good for Naomi. Hopefully, it continues. And uh, I think Naomi could actually be a good champion one day. Um, it's just a huge difference from the Raw division to these women. It, it, it It's insane. You look at it in two different ways. You have all these women on SmackDown who are all driven. And they look like they actually want to be there. And they put so much into their feuds. And then you look at Raw and says, no one gives a shit. Sasha Banks don't give a shit. She wants to be heel. They're holding their back, making her job to Nia Jax. I don't blame her for being pissed off all the time. Bailey and Charlotte, I don't know what the hell's going on there. Charlotte's probably so confused on what to do because they make her lose every Raw and win at every pay-per-view. Like, that makes fucking sense. It's, it's, it's such a cluster. And then you have, like, Dana Brooke, whoever the hell she is. Uh, Tamina, who's yet to come back. Emelina, who's yet to debut. Paige is on the return soon. I hope to do something good with her. So what the hell is going on in the Raw division? It's just a big cluster. And you look at SmackDown, and it's just 10 times better. SmackDown is the greatest women's division I've ever seen, bar none. So, move on. Becky Lynch, Naomi versus Alexa Bliss and Mickey James. Really, really good match. What a surprise. Um... Again, they just look more driven into what they're actually doing and performing out on that wrestling ring. I love it. I love it on SmackDown. Definitely a key part of SmackDown right now. The crowd is more into this than anything on the show as well. That's what I want to point out. That's insane. Um, 
Becky and Mickey fighting distracts Alexa Bliss, which leads into Naomi winning again. So Naomi's pinned the champion once again, setting up. See, this is this would make sense. You have Naomi building up cred to get that title shot. Not just, oh, if you beat the champion once, you get an instant title shot. No, 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 no. Not that shit on Raw happens on SmackDown. You get shit like this where Naomi's building up the credibility to actually earn herself a women's championship match, and I love the way they do it on SmackDown. So good. Road Dogg and whoever the hell's writing the show, I fucking applaud you because you just made SmackDown the most watchable thing I've ever since, like, the Ruthless Aggression era. Definitely 100%. Um... It's just funny and insane how night and day it is between both divisions. Raw needs to seriously step it up and copy what the fuck we're doing over here on SmackDown because they literally need some help. Um, I still believe at some point we're going to get the Mickey James turning on Alexa and doing the same story as how Mickey James turned on Trish. I do see that happening. And then maybe Mickey James winning the title at least once uh, in her return here on SmackDown. She signed a two or three year contract. So she's eventually, I think, going to win it. So we'll see what happens. Um, then we move on. We get a backstage promo from American Alpha saying there's basically no competition on SmackDown. Well, the issue is that there's no fucking division on SmackDown because they don't know what to do with everyone here. There's potential, but WWE just doesn't know what to do. This, this is definitely a, you know, writers are not going to be perfect. This is definitely a writer's block right here, what to do with the tag team division. So, American Alpha issue an open challenge. Are you kidding me? An open challenge. Why don't they just build American Alpha as this dominant team right now? And go through each like tag team in a division. I don't know. Um, but they issue an open challenge. Uh, apparently, when they did, Matt Hardy tweeted something about it. So there's a lot of speculation. He's probably just being a troll, being broken Matt Hardy. And But can you imagine American Alpha versus the Hardys at WrestleMania? How insane would that be? That would be a draw, let alone Matt Hardy and the broken brilliance gimmick on SmackDown. Man, you would just... Uh, SmackDown's already the A show. You'd make it the A-plus show. By far. Um, SmackDown division just needs... Uh, they have the potential. just needs some work, I think. I think eventually we'll probably will see the revival getting called up. We'll see uh, what happens. Um, but for the American Alpha Open Challenge, the Usos come out. So at that point, I'm like, okay, there's some potential of a good match here. But then everyone starts to come out. And they start brawling. Like, what? Did I miss something here? This is not the Royal Rumble in two weeks. It's Elimination Chamber. Why the hell are they all brawling with each other? But I already see where the hell this is going. Oh, my God, guys. We are going to get a fucking tag team Elimination Chamber match. I guarantee you it's going to fucking happen. Oh, I just don't want to see it happen because I'm just not going to care for it. It's just too much of a cluster. Too many people in the ring. Um, So, basically, we're hoping for the Revival or the Hardys to sign with the WWE. That's basically what we're trying to do to make this division better because I don't know what the hell they're going to do. So we'll, we'll see what happens. I mean, we'll see what, what culminates after the um, Asian Chamber and see what the tag team division on SmackDown does going into WrestleMania. Hopefully the Revival will get called up because I don't know if the Hardys will get signed uh, anytime soon. I think uh, it's definitely going to re-sign with uh, TNA. So move on. Uh we get Natty and Nikki Bella booked for Elimination Chamber. That's going to be insane and it's seriously underrated. That's going to be a very, very, very intense match, I think. And we're going to get uh, a lot of uh, a lot of intensity out of that match. That's uh, basically what I'm trying to sum it up as. Uh, can't wait for it. Uh, we've been waiting for it for you know, almost a month now, so we're definitely going to get it now at Elimination Chamber. We want to the main event: Dean Ambrose versus AJ Styles. Um, these guys have faced each other many times in 2016. We know they can put on a good match, and boy, was this a good match. Um, this was definitely one of the, one of their great matches, uh, if you look at all of them together. Um, the main events are just so much more watchable on SmackDown. Way, way, way better than Raw. And we had Miz and Corbin at ringside here. <laughs> oh, my God, man. There are so many people at ringside for commentary it was such a clusterfuck seven people at ringside including the commentators and maurice miz and baron corbin did they really need that many people it literally it just ronaldo was getting over talked it was terrible four is already way too much and annoying but anyways um miz and corbin eventually start brawling in the middle of the match which distracts the referee 
Ambrose gets mad and does a suicide dive onto Corbin and throws Miz into the bar- barricade. He gets back in the ring, right into the Styles Clash. AJ Styles picks up the win um, after the match. We got the uh, AJ Styles bringing out of the ring. The Miz gets in the ring. Skull crashing finale to Ambrose. Corbin gets in the ring. Gets an end of days to Miz and Ambrose at the same time. And Corbin ends the show off looking strong. Yes! Finally! Uh, this definitely is a great sign for Corbin's future with SmackDown looking strong right at the end of the show. I think he's a future WWE champion. He definitely deserves it. He can be one of the top heels uh, going forward on SmackDown and a top heel champion. Um, good for Baron Corbin. I know a lot of you guys out there love the work they're doing with him and see what I've been seeing since day one. I've been a day one Corbin fan here since the first days in NXT, man. I've been so behind Baron Corbin. I'm glad he's getting his shot now. Good for the guy. He definitely deserves it so elimination chamber looking like it's going to be insane this year so you know it has its ups and downs got some good matches in place and some potentially meh type of matches but i gave smackdown this week an 8 out of 10 for being so meh just because you know it gets me in every single week it draws me in every single week because guess what storylines make sense every single week like i just said i just my god i i it's it's so amazing how night and day uh, SmackDown is to Raw as well. It's just, it's crazy, guys. It's insane. So, we'll get into that last part of the show, and that is our WWE headlines. That's right. Welcome to WWE Headlines, guys. A part of the show where we talk about any important news in the WWE. We have headlines for you today. Well, at least I do. And to start off, one with the most important one of the week, and this was on everybody's mind, the Seth Rollins injury. Seth Rollins apparently re-aggravated his injury from last year, and there is talks that he tore his MCL again. Oh, fantastic. God, he's going to miss two WrestleManias in a row. Right now, he's back in Alabama. He's getting checked up by doctors. Uh, there's a lot of people saying that hit. this might be a troll job due to the WWE YouTube putting a video out. But, guys, it's not a troll job. <laughs> he's actually hurt. If it's a troll job, this could be the biggest troll job in history in the WWE. Um, the word right now is that he's going to miss WrestleMania. So, if he does, what will WWE do if Rollins can't wrestle at WrestleMania? Are they going to, you know, replace him with someone to face Triple H? Maybe Samoa Joe? That could be interesting. I mean, Samoa Joe could be obviously the heel in here. Or you can turn him face and have Triple H as the heel, you know, or vice versa. I can see a good match between Triple H and uh, Samoa Joe. Or, you know what? Does this create a domino effect? And just hopefully, because some of the matches are god-awful at WrestleMania this year, just domino effect its way to changing everything. So we're going to have to see what happens. I know and nothing so far and no updates on Seth Rollins. We'll see what happens in the next couple days, guys. Um, next bit of news, undoubtedly related, but wrestling related. Lucha Underground Season 1 and 2 is coming to Netflix. So if you're a Lucha Underground fan out there or don't know about Lucha Underground, it is a great wrestling promotion. I suggest you go see it. Former WWE superstar Johnny Mundo or Johnny Nitro kind of heads the thing. Uh, Netflix and Lucha Underground reached a deal to start uh, to show Season 1 and 2 on Netflix to further test interest to showing future seasons on Netflix. It will not be live. Netflix will continue to be... Well, or Netflix will not be the future home of Lucha Underground Live. It will continue to be on... I think it's called the El Rey Network or something like that. Um, but starting February 15th, we'll start getting Lucha Underground on Netflix, on Canadian Netflix and American Netflix. So I'm definitely excited for that. I, I haven't a- ever followed Lucha Underground. I've seen matches here and there. So you know what? I'm definitely going to watch season one and two. I'm actually intrigued to see how good it is. Um, if you remember uh, Justin Roberts... Uh, not Justin Roberts, uh, Josh Matthews, uh, former WWE uh, commentator and announcer. He's He also commentates the show, so it's going to be interesting to see. Um, next bit of news, Brock Lesnar versus uh, Kevin Owens for the first time ever is scheduled for a March 13th live event at MSG. And it'll be a SmackDown live event. It is being labeled as a spec, uh, what's it called? A special attraction match. And it'll be for the Universal Championship. So this is interesting. Does Brock Lesnar beat Goldberg? Before even Fastlane happens, does maybe Brock Lesnar beat Kevin Owens here for the Universal Championship? So there's a lot of questions surrounding this live event. But yeah, for the first time ever, Kevin Owens will face Brock Lesnar for the Universal Championship at a SmackDown live event at MSG. 
Next bit of news, the Hardys are heading out to Orlando WrestleMania weekend. They are hosting the hashtag Broken Tailgate. It will be Sunday, April 2nd from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. No word on if the Hardys are headed to WWE after this. So there's no word about uh, anything WWE related. They're just having a tailgate party the same weekend in Orlando as WrestleMania. (laughs) Who would have thought? Next bit of news. WWE contacting former names for WrestleMania 33. Former female talents have been contacted by WWE to show up in some type of appearance at WrestleMania 33. And as of now, Nia Jax, Sasha Banks versus Bailey, or Nia Jax versus Sasha Banks versus Bailey versus Charlotte Flair is planned for the WWE Raw Women's Championship. So interesting there. I wonder who they call back. Uh, Trish Stratus is having a baby, so she can't call back. You know, so we'll see. Maybe Stacey Keebler, the Tory Wilson. Who knows? I'd love to see them. That'd be great. Uh, update on Tajiri's injury. He's expected to return to 205 Live in two weeks. So good for Tajiri for healing up from that leg injury fast. 205 Live definitely could use some help. Um, update on Finn Balor. Uh, he was evaluated by doctors this week and he was not clear to compete at all this week, which is why he was not at the Royal Rumble in some sort of appearance. His return date is still targeted for er- uh, late February, early March. So later this month, early March, is when we get the return of Finn Balor. No word on yet what his WrestleMania plans are. He posted a photo recently with a coffee mug uh, stating all his injuries he sustained at the SummerSlam match of last year. Uh, Next bit of news. Plans for... Okay, this is where I'm going to start to rant a little bit, guys. Plans for Undertaker and Roman Reigns. Yes, the great match where everyone wants to see, Vince. Yeah, everyone wants to see that. No! No one wants to see this. Idea has been discussed... About Undertaker passing the torch to Roman Reigns. Like, that makes fucking sense. Despite Reigns likely to get booed out of the building, gee, I wonder why Vince has wanted for this match for a while. While with Taker's health in question and is scared that he could be, this could be Taker's last WrestleMania. If this is his last WrestleMania, Vince, why is he not facing John Cena? The match everybody wants to fucking see for Taker's last match. You're going to make him face Roman Reigns? Are you kidding me? God, it's such a terrible idea. Also, apparently WWE says that they could make Roman Reigns heal for this because of the reception he'd get. But the long-term goal is for him to become the face of the company. Are you kidding me? You just career suicided the guy. He can't be the face anymore. Are you high? This guy's going to get booed for the rest of his career. There's no way he gets cheered now. Ever. You're going <laughs> to. The only way you're going to make this guy face is if you reform the shield. And even then he's still get half booed. You've just John Cena the shit out of him. WWE, and now you're career suiciding him. At WrestleMania by making him face Undertaker. It's done. Roman Reigns. Re- zip up the body bag on Roman Reigns. He's never become face ever again. <sighs> God. That's. That's incredible. I can't believe they're still going through with that. Anyways guys. That, I think, is going to wrap it up for week number 43 of the Lowdown Show Brain Wars on the Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. You know what? I'm taking up Brain Wars next week. I don't care. We are a Canadian-based RWB podcast that reviews and discusses Monday Night Raw. There's a nice SmackDown from the past week. Also, during the show, we have our Twitter poll segment called the Luke Gallows Polls, which doesn't exist anymore, and I'm reading off an old script. Look at that. Uh, hopefully, our new segment debuts next week when we have both of us back in the studio. In WWE headlines where we talk about any important news in the WWE, as you just heard, and some crappy news with that last part with Roman Reigns, you know, the guy everyone wants to see. Remember, every week the Load on Show is broadcasted live except this episode on Spreaker.com slash NHBWP. And if you'd like to join in the conversation, have your thoughts and questions and read discussed on the podcast, tweet us and follow us on Twitter at NoHoldsBarWP or by subscribing to us on YouTube and dropping a comment on the video down below. I am your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. Guys, uh, I'll try to get another universal or universal universe mode out to you guys soon. Uh, a lot of hype for this series. I'm hoping it, it does good, and we'll see where it goes from there. So be sure to check that out and follow that. And we got some more unboxings for you. Other than that, guys, I am here, and my corporate co-host who's not here, corporate Cappy, we're always reminding you to keep it on the lowdown. We're